So while we're talking about the plate noise in the last couple videos I've uploaded, I wanted to go ahead and do a breakdown of this mountain that I created in, uh, in Gaia. So we're just going to do a step-by-step -step, uh, looking at the nodes I'm using, and you can see the node layout here. So let's go ahead and start at the front. Come on. There we go. At the front. So first and foremost, I need to create the base formation of our mountain. And that'll be the overall shape that we have here. So to do that, I used a plate. You can see the plates here. And you can see the scale that I used, the steepness and the collision. Uh, quite a bit going on here. So we needed to tone it down a bit, so I added it to the gradient. And this is what we were left with the gradient. It looks pretty cool, nice and rocky. So I had displaced that, and the, I just did a little bit, not too much, just to kind of shrink it in a bit. Then breaker, and again, all I did was use, I didn't even use it here, wow. Um, hard cracks and fat, and uh, hard cracks and accurate is typically what I use, and then that's all I use. And the only reason why I use those two options is because I just want these cracks coming in, these bigger cracks. I don't want it to do a really large amount of erosion on my landscape. And then I threw in my erosion here, and I used a height node to select just this part up until this line right here, then it fades out into black. That way I erode the bottom parts quite a bit, but the top part's not eroded a lot, just slightly. And that leaves this top part to be really rocky, like a rock is jutting out out of the top of the mountain. And then I blended it all together using a thermal erosion, and you can see how the thermal erosion brought in these taluses, and especially up here makes it look pretty nice. Well, I needed to throw in a little more detail on the sides. So what I did is I took a gradient, another one, a displace node, and then I used the rugged method to displace this uh, gradient. I also added a line noise. I used another displace using rugged, and then I clamped it down quite a bit. So you turn on the clamp here, this is a filter built into the node turn on clamp and I brought the max value down to 10% and I took these four and combined them and this is what we were left with then I threw in a stratifier node and I turned down the strength and the substrat I turned down the strength quite a bit but I increased the substrata to uh, 16 and that's what I'm left with here and the reason why I chose those small values is because I wanted small stratification I didn't want a whole lot then I eroded that, and I used very small amounts of erosion here, just enough to break it up, as you can see here. So we broke up that stratification, and then we also added these really long fluvial lines here, um, but kept the small amounts of rock. And then at this point, I combined those two landscapes together here. And as you can see here, that's this right here, this is without, and this is with that other wrote that other landscape I made down here. You can see how that adds some rock detail coming in, like it's being uh, broken up and falling apart. At this point, everything else is texturing. Uh, and what I ended up doing is I used protrusion and velocity like I normally do in all of my uh, texturing. So that's protrusion, and that's velocity, and this is only selecting it for the first base landscape that makes the overall shape of my mountain. I combine those two together, so this is what I'm combined with max 100%, and then a sat map. And this sat map uses a uh, nice brown rocky color, which doesn't seem to be loading right now. There we go. You can see how that's looking with that rocky brown color. The second part is, and again, this is all just on this one terrain that I made right here, another velocity map, and another protrusion, and the protrusion map here is really important because it's bringing out those protrusions uh, inside of the stratification. Combine those two together, and this is what you're left with. 
I use a set map on that and the set map is going to show it based on what I have set here for color so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to pin that for color and that's what we're left with and I chose something a little bit more stark and contrasted with the other one they have this dark rocky material almost volcanic and then these light brown orange tan colors right here and yellow colors lots of brown let's just go ahead and take this final landscape pin that for color and I combine those into a mixer as you can see here the mixer is using a blend 65 percent so I'm taking this sat map and combining it with this sat map and this is what I get and the reason why I chose blend at 65 percent is because it's the only one that allowed me to keep that rocky color right here that I wanted for the top parts as well as keep these other colors that I liked inside of my uh, color map and I'm getting these really cool lines here look pretty sweet now the next thing to do is you go to the uh, final landscape which is actually just a snow erosion and I selected the height so um, or sorry what I did is I took this put in a slope selection masked out by height so I threw in a height node attached it to the mask of the slope node and I selected the very steep and some shallow areas of the of the overall slope threw it into a quick color and uh, after that I went ahead and threw in a quick color for the snow as well the snow mask threw that into a mixer so what I have is this which are these two set maps combined then I have this which is the two set maps that are already combined in with the snow set the max at 100% and again with the erosion slope or the snow slope max 100% now the way I differentiated between this uh, color and the other color is I actually took this um, combiner right here and I took the separation mask right here and I inverted it and if I were to display this as, let's see if it'll work for me, show as mask. Doesn't seem to be doing what I need it to do. Uh, but what it's doing is it's selecting this landscape right here. That's all it's doing. It's selecting this landscape and its features and not selecting this landscape and its features. That's why having this separation mask is super important because then you can get the texture coming in where you need it to come in at. And then that's what you're left with. Super easy. So if you were to take this into something like Mudbox, you can sculpt out this rocky part and uh, make it look really rocky and textury. And you can do so maybe on the edges here as well and right here and make it look really rocky. And then down here you can do a few more things if you wanted. But that's essentially what we're left with at 4k which is what I built it out at actually looks pretty decent um, and I hope you've learned some ways that you can use the uh, the plate noise here because I know we were just talking about it in some other tutorials but I mean they're very basic so this is just one way that you can combine two different landscapes together by the way I used max at a hundred percent to combine these two together to get these details that I wanted and uh, if you have any questions or concerns Go ahead and put them in the video. You can ask me pretty much anything, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. If I don't respond within 24 hours, it's probably because I'm busy, but I usually comment on every video comment, uh, or every comment on every video, uh, if I can remember or if I can get to it. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.